So speaking of tests, we got a really big test here for our sophomore corner, Deontay Banks. This man, whoo, did he draw <laughs> the bad card there from week one? Mm. Going against Justin Jefferson, who I still think is at the very worst the second best wide receiver in this league, if not the best. You could say Ty- Tyreek Hill has a, has a, has an option of calling himself the best. I but, think he is a legit statement to call himself the best. Listen, if you are listening to fantasy football fans, yeah. you're saying CD Lamb, which I think, yeah, no, and that's not but, me being a biased uh, Giants fan. No, I think I think that Tyreek Hill and Justin Jefferson are on a, a league of their own at that point, and then you got some guys after them, you know, and CD Lamb falls in that. AJ Brown for the Eagles does as well. Like, I'm not trying to hate on division rivals here when I say it that way. Uh, they're just not the same level. But Justin Jefferson was literally on pace for his best season last year, guys. If it wasn't for him getting injured, you'd probably still be talking about him as as the best at that point there. So, um, you know, he had over a thousand yards last year, guys, in just ten games. That's that's pretty damn impressive. He had more receiving yards per game than any season in his career. Keep in mind, this is the offensive player of the year in twenty two. Like the guy was on pace to break records in 22, and he still had a better season. You know, he just had a midseason injury with some bad quarterback play as well. That that definitely didn't help him. That's for damn sure. But I mean, he still averaged the last four weeks of the season 119 yards per game. So if you're thinking, because it was a hamstring issue, that hey, maybe it's going to slow him down. Maybe there's going to be an issue. Like He came back from the last year already. Like You can't sit there and say, oh, slow start is coming back from an injury. No, the injury was something midseason. He came back, and he still was balling out when he came back. Now, hamstring issues can flare up. They can cause issues later on down the line. People that have hamstring issues, they they got issues sometimes. You know, let's, let's remember last year with, you know, Darren Waller and his hamstring issues. You know, and that was still overflow from his Raider days at that point. That wasn't a brand new injury. You know, that's yeah. just the way hamstring issues are. They tend to linger for some people. We don't know with Justin Jefferson because this is the first time he's really had that kind of injury. So we'll have to see what happens with him. Um, now, Dory Jackson missed three games last year due to injury. In those games... Banks was clearly the top receiver, top corner in that in those games. So I'm using those games a little bit to judge what Deontay Banks did as a rookie when he was the top, a top corner in this in this uh, on the season here. So in the game, C.D. Lamb put up 151 yards against him in one game. 151 guys. That's that's not good. <laughs> that's like. On pace for two thousand well, yards, kind of bad. That's that's well. Really CD bad. Lamb also put over seventeen hundred yards on the season last year. Yeah. So let's let's not take that away. Oh, from I'm not him. saying yeah. that he did it. The scrub did it to him. I'm not saying that by any means. I, 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 I didn't say you know. seventeen games, hundred and fifty-one yards. You know, I love to do the math, so I did it. Two thousand five hundred and sixty-seven yards in the season. If he had done that for the entire year, so. I think CD Lamb had what seventeen hundred yards in the season. I think, if I'm right. Oh yeah, seventeen change. Yeah, like 17, so, almost so, seventeen. Oh so, yeah, so one and a half times what he did, and he's one of the best receivers in the league already. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's a little crazy there. Um, so then, you got the other two games was against Terry McLaren. So, Scary Terry, 133 yards combined of the two. Now, that's 94. Um, hold on. My math is way off on that. Woo, what did I put on my, my notes here? <laughs> so, 133 yards, that's 66 and a half yards per game. On a season, that's 1,130 yards. That's about average what he puts up. So, overall, for the for the three games... 94 and two-thirds yards per game. I'm going way deep in the woods here, in the weeds here for the yeah. numbers right now. But I'm just trying to make the point that he didn't look good, guys. 
So like people are acting like this is this is an automatic like hey we got Deontay Banks he's gonna be CB one and I think there's a lot of confidence in some people that I do think is a little misplaced to be honest and I try to hate on Banks even though listen we we said it before we weren't fans of the pick of Banks when when we made it I'm not trying to hate on him I'm just trying to give you legit like here's what happened last year. We expect him to be better this year because it's his second year. That's 100% the case. I also will say very loudly, he looked much more comfortable in zone coverage last year. When Big time. Towards the end of the year, and I think this was part of the issues that was going on with Wink Markdale, towards the end of the year, Banks looked so much more comfortable in zone coverage, and you saw it because Wink was getting forced to use zone coverage. I swear that was the issues he was having with Dable because it was quite obvious that he was getting more agitated as the season went, and there was a whole lot more zone coverage towards the end of the year. That's when he started getting interceptions. That's where he started looking a whole lot better. I think, I think Shane Bowen's a better fit for Deontay Banks than Wink Martindale ever would have been. Because Banks can do man coverage, yes. He's not an exclusive man coverage corner. He's not. He didn't do that in Maryland. He didn't look comfortable doing it in New York. What did we say when we drafted him? He was an athletic guy that was great at zone, that could move around the ball, and they were going to try to train him to do what we want to, but like it just didn't fit with Wink's defense. Like It's not a knock on Wink, like, right like, Dude likes to blitz a lot. But... Wait, screw him. Seriously. The way yeah. he left last year, seriously, screw him. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's like a child picking up his toys and threatening to go home. Go home, then. Oh, that's exactly what he did. It's not threatening. He's just like... He did go home. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> he, didn't even, he didn't even quit. He just left. Yeah. He went home. Like <laughs> He was air carving <laughs> all the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's it's it, to me, it's a little crazy. Um you know what they did with him last year and you saw the difference once like i said wink was kind of for, I don't th- again i have no inside information as guys i'm not trying to be like breaking news but i think that's how it went down i really do i think wink was getting forced to go out of his own comfort zone for the sake of his players because i think the players went complaining to dable and dable backed them instead of backing wink that was part of the thing with xavier mckinney last year you know talking trash as well without giving names talk about coaching staffs and issues there I think that's what a lot of that was. So I'm curious to see what Banks does in the second year in a, a system I think is going to be better suited to his needs. But I don't think we can sit there and say he's a number one corner. I don't think we can. He's our number one corner, but I don't think he's earned that right yet to say he's a number one corner talent. You're not wrong for saying it because obviously the play of last year, he was also a rookie last year. Yep. So. We've said it countless times last year when we drafted him. Corner's not the position that you normally excel at your no. first year. Like you need two to three years possibly to be like where you need to be at. So you got a new uh, defensive coordinator. It's gonna. It looks like he's gonna play into his strengths. Like yep. it should be a lot better year for Banks being a little bit more veteran in the yep. position and playing to a system that he feels more comfortable with. And I'm so, hoping they give him the help. I really do because he's going to need help. And guys, again, he's it's, running it's against JJ. Yeah, he's running an absolute gauntlet here in in this in this uh, you know season. He's got Justin Jefferson to star. He's got CD Lamb twice, AJ Brown twice. He's got Mike Evans. Okay, like that, that's not the, Mike Evans is probably the most underrated. Um, oh yeah, you know receiver in this league probably besides I'm on Ross St. Brown, who I still say is ridiculous. Uh, underrated as unless, well. you, unless you're a fancy player then you guys yeah. all know but I mean you got those guys there you got um, Chris Olave he's going to face this year because we're playing the Saints as well you know like he's got a freaking gauntlet the biggest he help was... that he has against Olave is Derek Carr yeah well I mean you could say that too <laughs> with Sam Darnold but I mean <laughs> yeah. but I mean I'm just saying like this is I this test is what I'm actually out of all the things in this in this game. Number one is Daniel Jones. I want to see what he does. That's obviously number one. Yeah, Malik Neighbors. I'm actually pretty confident in, which just sounds weird as a Giant fan to have confidence, but I'm pretty confident in. in Especially him. you. 
I, I think he's going to be something special. I really do. And I, I, like I said, I've been proven wrong before. I'm not going to be that guy and say I'm never wrong. But I, I, I just think there's something special about this kid. And I think he's going to do good things. Deontay Banks is the guy that I'm second behind just, you know, DJ there. Curious to see what he does. Because his play is going to dictate a lot of what happens this season, guys. Because without him, it's Adoree Jackson, guys, who's going to be in this game. And I, we talked about it before. I think he's going to be a, 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 a you know, a, a, a fake starter, so to speak. There, like they'll probably start him just to give him the start of the, on the ticker there. As you know, Robbie asked that. Appreciate you coming on the show, man. Um, but yeah, I, it's like if he doesn't succeed, Adore Jackson did look great last year, guys. Then that pass rush really has to help them big time, big time. Yeah. And they're going to need help in the deep at that point to, to stop the over, you know, the, the you know the long throws at that point too, and make teams dink and dunk. If he looks bad, guys, it's going to be a long season. So, like I said, I'm giving you guys a little bit of fear on Banks, but it's not coming from a place of hate. It's just a place of concern. I want this kid to succeed. I want him to be a Pro Bowler. I want him to be the best damn corner in this league. Because I'm a Giants fan first and foremost. He just worries me. Yeah. He just worries me. And I and I think and it's fair be, to say. I think he'll be a legit starter in this in this in a corner in this league, too. I should say that. I'm just not sold on him being a number one yet. And that's my biggest concern with this season. Again, besides DJ. Again, <laughs> <laughs> an asterisk to anything you talk about there, so. If you like that clip, then you will love the full episodes, too. Find us on your favorite podcast app and look for us on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks so much. Please, I'm, I'm begging you. Please, please.